everybody. It's good to be here tonight. Appreciate everyone that's come to be with us. And I uh, want to welcome those also that have joined us online and are watching this evening. Uh, we do appreciate you uh, being with us tonight. A uh, couple of uh, things we want to make mention of this evening. Uh, if you uh, have looked at the uh, bulletin there for this week, uh, the verse on there is a good one. It says, From the rising of the sun to its setting, let the name of the Lord be praised. And uh, from uh, the time that the Lord wakes us up in the morning and gives us that breath of life and our feet hit the floor uh, to the time that we lay down our head at night, we've got a lot to praise the Lord for, don't we? Uh, we really do. God has been so good to us, and uh, he's blessed us better than what we deserve. And I'm thankful for the goodness of the Lord tonight. Uh, a couple of things there just want to make mention of this evening. Uh, of course, uh, I'm sure it was mentioned on Sunday, but I uh, appreciate everyone that had give uh, to the offering there on Mother's Day. The offering uh, total was uh, $3,180, and uh, that will go for the Tennessee Baptist Children's Home. So uh, thank the Lord for that, and uh, thank the Lord for all those that gave. Uh, Cheryl, do you have a total on the human trafficking offering? 740 okay was a special offering for human trafficking and uh is there still availability if, if people want to give if you want to give you still can uh so keep that in mind remember that so um, also uh, a couple of uh things coming up here we've got uh we're going to be recognizing our graduates on this coming sunday and uh hannah richardson will be uh, leading that and taking care of that so uh, come be looking forward to that. We've had a couple of uh, graduates that we're going to be recognizing, that we're going to be honoring, and also some of our little ones uh, that are graduating from kindergarten. So uh, do come be a part of that service with us on Sunday morning. That'll be towards the end. And then, uh, of course, will be a, a Memorial Day weekend as well. Uh, so uh, definitely keep that in mind, remembering that. Also, I uh, want to make mention of uh, Vacation Bible School. will be here right, or it's just right around the corner. Uh, we're within a week or so from it, and uh, we want to encourage everybody that can. Uh, if you'll notice on the back table back there where the bulletins are, uh, there are some uh, pieces of paper, little flyers that have been made up, and I uh, encourage you, if you would, take some of those with you uh, tonight on your way out. Uh, you can uh, take those, put those out at your workplace or uh, some of the kids around the neighborhood where you live. Uh, you want to invite them to come be with us in Vacation Bible School. We won't be much in prayer uh, for Vacation Bible School. That's a wonderful opportunity that the Lord has given us as a church uh, to be able to reach the children of this community and tell them about Jesus and to tell them about a Savior. Uh, that can make a difference in their life. So don't forget about that. That'll be June the 5th, starting on Sunday night. Uh, and that'll go through June the 9th. We'll start at 645, and that'll end at 9. So be much in prayer. Remember that. We're going to pray for that for sure this evening uh, as we pray. Also, uh, let's not forget, uh, coming up this Sunday uh, morning, the 29th, we'll have uh, David Myers will be taking care of of announcements. Uh, John Walker and Rick Roberts will be taking care of the parking lot duty uh, for this coming Sunday. And then also um, the bulletins uh, is Pat Walker. If there's anything that you need added or put in the bulletin there for Sunday, you can see Pat. Her number is in the bulletin and also on the screen. Ronnie Robbins is the deacon of the month, so remember that. And then also if you need anything put on the monitors, you can see Doug or you can see Francis. And, of course, the phone tree will be Francis. And uh, Billy Cox will have the phone ministry there uh, for this coming Sunday. So keep that in mind. Remember that. Uh, there's a little note I want to make mention of. It uh, says, when we're out shopping, please pick up packages of underwear or socks for the backpack ministry that will be coming up in July. Uh, girls and boys, men and women are needed uh, for girls and women. Um, but it has a little bit more information on there so you can read that. Uh, so uh, just keep those things in mind, and uh, the backpack ministry will be coming up very soon, so remember that. All righty, if uh, nobody else uh, has any announcements or anything that needs to be brought up uh, this evening. All righty, how about prayer requests tonight? We definitely want to remember Vacation Bible School when we pray. How about uh, any more? Talked to her son at 
food city around C, except, except they did have her stabilized. So remember her. Remember Connie Buckner when we pray. Let's do remember her. Anyone else? Pearl Coffee family. Her daughter passed away. Pearl Coffee. Yes. Please remember her family. Amy Smith is her name that passed away. Remember this. Remember this family in our prayers. They be another tonight. Got several uh, sick. Let's pray and remember them. Uh, let's continue to remember our country as we pray. Let's continue to remember the leadership of our country. Let's continue to remember. Uh, let's be much in prayer for all those that uh, that are that are lost tonight. Most of all, that don't need a, that don't have a savior. And, and let's pray that that God would work in their heart, work in their life, that they would see and they would realize in their heart a need for the Lord and a need for a Savior in their lives. So please pray and remember the lost tonight as we pray. Remember our community. Uh, remember uh, the ones that we have in our church. I thought about a couple weeks ago, um, Sunday morning, uh, you know, we've got several uh, children in our church that are coming to that age of accountability. And uh, we just need to be praying that God's Holy Spirit would work in their heart, work in their life, and, and would draw and deal in their heart. And, and conviction would come their way. They would see... And, and that they would have the opportunity to call on Jesus and be saved. So let's be praying uh, for the children that we do have here in our church that are coming that age of accountability. Uh, that God begins to deal with their heart, that they would open their heart to receive him as their Savior. So let's definitely remember that when we pray. Anyone else this evening before we go to the Lord in prayer? Pray for those families of those children. Absolutely. In that school shooting. Absolutely. That's getting to be an everyday every week thing. Yes. And who would have ever thought in America that that would happen? Absolutely. Something's wrong. Yes. We definitely need to remember that. young boys would take a gun and go in and shoot innocent children. It's just not the right picture. No. It's hard for us to comprehend that it and understand that. It sure is. We need to remember these families tonight in our prayers. We sure do. Remember our country tonight. church of the living God we've got to be that light and that witness and we've got to be out telling people about the Lord and about Jesus because he is somebody that can make a change and a difference in someone's home in somebody's life in somebody's family he can help them to those that are struggling those that are going through whatever they're facing I'm glad that I've got a friend this evening that sticks closer than a brother uh, we all have struggles and we all face things we all go through things in our life and uh, I know this, I, I don't even know want to begin to think where I would be 
uh, if I didn't have the Lord in my life, uh, that I could look to each and every day for strength and for help and for guidance and direction and prayer. And, and uh, we just need to be about the Father's business doing what God saved and called us to do. We definitely want to pray tonight. Remember this. I know everyone's heart's heavy for uh, what has taken place uh, in Texas there yesterday. Remember this family. Remember this community. I know they're broken. Let's pray for them. Remember them tonight as we pray. If everybody will tonight, let's go to the Lord. Father, we ask you, Lord, tonight. Come before you, Lord, this evening. Father, Lord, just lifting up our hearts to you. Father, Lord, you know that our hearts, Father, are heavy. Lord, you know that our hearts are troubled. Lord, you know our hearts are burdened. Father, Lord, we pray that, Father, we're so hurt, Lord, and, and Father, Lord, just the, the grief that, Father, we feel and the sorrow, Father, that we feel for those families, Lord, that are in Texas, Father, that, Lord, have lost their children, Lord, that have lost their loved ones, Father, this, this, to this tragedy, Lord, that, Father, happened yesterday, God, and we just ask and we pray that, Father, Lord, that, Father, we don't understand, and we don't know why, and, Father, we ask ourselves the question, Father, and, Lord, we know that it's hard for us, Lord, to even be able to fathom. It's hard for us, Lord, to be able to comprehend, Lord, what would drive somebody, Father, to even go and to do this, Lord. But, Father, we just pray, Father, Lord, and look to you. Lord, asking that, Father, you would give strength and that, God, you would give help. God, that you would give comfort, Lord, in this time that, Lord, only you can give. We pray, Father, Lord, for our country. We pray for the leadership of our country, Father. Lord, we ask and we pray that, Father, Lord, your church, your people, Father, Lord, would stand, Father, for what's right, and God would stand for you. Father, I pray that you would help us as your people, as the church, Father. Help us, Lord, to be about sharing the love of Jesus to a lost and dying world. Father, I pray that, Lord, you would help us, God, to be that light and that witness, Lord, in our own community, Father, in our own state, in our own country, Father, and throughout the world that, Lord, you would want and have us to be. Father, we pray for these requests that, Lord, have been made mention of. Father, we pray for those that, Lord, have lost loved ones, Father, this week. We pray for those that are sick and, Father, those that are in hospitals. Father, we pray for those, Lord, tonight that, God, are facing, Lord, challenges and, and difficulty in different circumstances. God, we pray that, Lord, they would look to you. God, we pray for those that, Father, are facing addiction, Father, in their life. Lord, struggle, weakness, Father. We pray that, Father, Lord, they as well would look to you. Father, we all know here tonight, Father, we all struggle. We all deal with things, and we all have weaknesses, Father. And we pray that you would help us, Lord, to look to you each and every day, God, for the strength and the help, Father, that we need that can only be found in you. We pray, Father, for Vacation Bible School that's coming up. We pray and... We thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Lord, we thank you for the privilege that it is to be able, Father, to have Vacation Bible School. And, Father, we thank you that, Lord, we've got a time that, Father, we can, Lord, try our best, Lord, just to minister, Father, to the children, Lord, of this community, Father, that will be coming. We pray that you would go ahead and, Father, begin to prepare their hearts and open their hearts, Father, Lord, to receive your word. And we're praying, Father... Lord, hoping and praying that, Father, lost children, Father, would come to the saving knowledge and the understanding of you, Father. We ask and pray that, Father, you would prepare each and every one that, Lord, has a part that teaches and serves and whatever their job may be, that, God, you'd use them mightily for your kingdom. God, bless the service tonight. Lord, be with our children and our youth classes. God, we pray for our time up here that, Lord, you'd bless our Bible study. God, bless the one that comes and sings tonight, Lord. We pray that you would just bless, Lord, the songs that we could continue to worship you in. We love you. We thank you. And all this we ask in your name. Amen. April, if you would come and sing tonight. You pray for April. She's going to come and share her song with us this evening.
It's all that I can do. In desperation, I'll seek heaven to pray this for you. I'll pray for your healing. The circumstances would change. I pray that the fear inside would flee. In Jesus' name, I pray that. A
name of Jesus is powerful, isn't it? Amen. Amen. I'm thankful for that. If you have your Bibles this evening and uh, would like to turn with us, uh, we're going to be reading in the book of Psalm this evening, Psalm 84, Psalm 84. And uh, we ask for your prayers that we'll try our best uh, to preach what God has given us and what he's laid on our heart. Uh, Psalm 84 uh, is a, a psalm that uh, the psalmist David um, had begun to write. And uh, when, you, when we begin to read this, uh, as David began to write, David had a longing. Uh, David had a longing for uh, the presence of God in his life. Uh, but not only that, but David had a longing just to... He, he understood what it was. He took something uh, that was physical. And uh, as we read about here in this uh, Psalm 84, in these verses, uh, David begins to write about, and he talks about the, the tabernacle, the place of worship, the sanctuary, the place where God's presence was and where it was felt. But David talked about the longing that he had to be uh, just in the house of the Lord, the, the presence of God, and the sanctuary, and the temple of the house of the Lord. But also, I believe that it went a little bit deeper for David. It went more so than just the building. It went more so than just the physical part that you could see with the natural eye. But it was a spiritual, it was a spiritual feeling that David had as well. You see, David, the Bible teaches us and tells us about David. David was a man after God's own heart. David had a relationship with the Lord. He had a relationship with God. David understood what it was to talk with the Lord, to depend upon the Lord, to lean upon the Lord. David understood what it was to be in a time of trouble. He understood what it was to be in a time of stress. He understood what it meant to be in a time when his life was in danger, when he was constantly on the run and in fear for his life. He was afraid to lay his head down. Why? Because he knew that his enemy, that Saul or some other enemy, was on his trail and at an instance he could take his life but David had faith and David had trust in the almighty God and David knew that he put his faith and trust in the Lord he put his life in the Lord he knew that the Lord was his salvation he knew that the Lord was his shield. He knew that the Lord was his high tower that he said the righteous run into and they are saved. He knew that the Lord was his buckler. He knew that the Lord was his strength. He even knew the Lord was his shepherd. That the Lord would watch over and protect and take care of David, his own, his anointed, the one that he chose to lead and guide his people. You see, David had faith in God. And he trusted in the Lord. And David knew what it, was, what it was to have a relationship with Almighty God. David longed for the presence of the Lord in his life. And I believe for you and I that have been saved by the grace of God, we as truly, as Christians, as born again believers in God, us that know what it's like to have the Holy Spirit of God living and dwelling and living on the inside of our heart. When we, when we know the presence of God, when we feel the presence of God, there is something within you and I that have been saved. We have a longing to be with the Lord, don't we? We have a longing to be in the presence of God. We have a longing, my friend, to spend time with the Father and spend time with God and to dwell and to be in His presence. We have that. Psalm 84, we're going to start with verse number 1. The Bible says this, How admirable are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. That word means how lovely. David was saying, How lovely, Lord, are thy tabernacles. He said, My soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. You see, 
Just in these two verses right here, we find that David was talking about, as he said, how lovely are thy tabernacles, O Lord of hosts. What was a tabernacle? A tabernacle was a tent. It was a dwelling place. It was a place where the Lord was, where the presence of God was. You see, at that moment in time when David was writing this, this was before the temple was built. This was before that the Lord, that God had a house that had been built and set aside and dedicated for Himself. You see, at this moment in time, the Ark of the Covenant, the presence of God, as the Hebrew people referred to it as, was still dwelling in the tent and in the tabernacles. You see, David was saying, O Lord, how lovely are thy tabernacle, O Lord of hosts. He's saying, how lovely is thy dwelling place, O Lord. How lovely is the place where you dwell. How lovely the place is where your presence is at. You see, the Jewish people, the Hebrew people, they felt like and they believed in their heart that at the Holy of Holies, the Ark of the Covenant, that that was where between the cherubims on the mercy seat, that was where the throne of God was. That was where the Shekinah glory had come down to Moses and to Aaron. That was where the presence of Almighty God was and where it dwelt was on the mercy seat of the Holy of Holies, the Holy of Holies on the Ark of the Covenant. And David was saying how lovely that place is. Man, how wonderful it is for you and I that have been saved by the grace of God. Isn't it great to be able just to dwell in the presence of God? Isn't it wonderful just to be able to spend time with the Lord and to spend time in His presence? Now you think about that for just a minute. Where do we spend time with God in His presence? Man, sometimes when we come to church, man, just the presence of God is in this place and we feel the Spirit of God. We feel the presence of God dwelling in here and in our heart, in our soul, in our spirit, we feel that. But we also, when we're away from church and we're spending time with the Lord alone, whether it be through prayer or just reading and studying His Word or just meditating and thinking about how God is good to us and how He's blessed us and what He's done. And man, how wonderful it is just to be caught up and just to dwell, just to be in the presence of the Lord. David was saying, how lovely, Lord, is your dwelling place. He said, my soul longeth, yea, even fainteth for the courts of the Lord. He said, my heart and my flesh crieth out for the living God. David had a spiritual desire, didn't he? He did. David had a love for God. He had a love for the house of God. He had a love, not only that, but he had a love for the living God. But David had a spiritual desire for the presence of Almighty God in his life. And I believe for you and I that's been saved by the grace of God, we've got that same, don't we? We have a love for the house of God. We have a love for God Himself. We have a love for the spiritual things of God. But we also have a longing. And we also have a love. And we also have a spiritual desire to spend time and be in the presence of Almighty God. That is something God, when He saved us, He instilled and put inside of us. Verse number 3, David says this, Yea, the sparrow hath found a house. And the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young, even thine altars, O Lord of hosts, my King and my glory. He said, Blessed are they that dwell in thy house, they will be still praising thee. You see, David understood what it was to be able just to dwell in the presence of God. Because when we're dwelling in the presence of God, there's a lot of praise for God that's going on. When you're in the presence of God, you are reflecting 
you are praising, you are thanking, you are, my friend, you are recognizing, you are honoring the one true and living God. You are praising Him for what He's done for you. You are praising Him for going to the cross of Calvary. You're praising Him for His goodness. You're praising Him for His blessing. You're praising Him for His grace and His mercy and His love and His everlasting love for you and I that extends each and every day. Oh, how wonderful the mercy of God is. Oh, how wonderful the grace of God is that He extends each and every day. He was talking, he said, they that dwell in thy house, they will still be praising thee. You see, when we are in the presence of the Lord, my friend, to, to be in God's presence, you can always look and you always know that when we're in the presence of God and God's presence is there, we're praising Him. Because that's all we can do is praise the Lord in His presence. Amen? Amen? That's all we can do is praise Him for His goodness and for who He is. Verse 5 says, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. God is our strength. Church, that's what we've got to remember this evening. Is God is our strength. And as David wrote here, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee. Talking about in the Lord. Our strength is in the Lord. We as a human being, as individuals, we are weak individuals. We are susceptible. We are weak to a lot of things. And my friend, if we're not careful, some of us, it's different things. We are weak to things that you may be strong in. I may be strong in things that you're weak in. Vice versa. Listen, we all have struggles. We all have weaknesses. But there's one thing we've got to remember is that God is our strength. And when we put our faith and trust in the Lord and we look to God for that strength, the Bible says, blessed is that man. Blessed is he that his strength is in the Lord. Amen? Listen, David also wrote in another place, he said, from whence cometh my help? He said, for I lift my eyes into the hills. From whence cometh my help? My help cometh from the Lord, the maker of heaven and of earth. David knew who to look to. You and I that have been saved by the grace of God, we know who to look to in the very present time, in our present time of need and help and trouble. Jesus is the one we need to look to. Jesus, my friend, is the answer. Jesus will be our strength in that time of weakness. He went on to say, verse number uh, 6, or verse number 5, Blessed is the man whose strength is in thee, and whose heart are the ways of them. You know, the good thing about the Lord is this. When Jesus saves you, he, gives, he renews your heart, doesn't he? He gives you a new heart. You remember in Ezekiel, what did Ezekiel say? I'm going to do a work in you. I'm going to take out that old stony heart, that cold, that stony, that sinful heart, that calloused heart, and I'm going to put a new heart within you. I'm going to do a new thing. The Bible said if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen? He went on to say, verse number 6, Who passing through the valley of Baca make it a well, the rain also filleth the pools. He went on to say, They go from strength to strength. Every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. On verse number 6, there's a little revision there. And it kind of reads like this. It's revised. In whose heart... Are the highways to Zion passing through the valley of weeping? They make it a place of springs. Yea, the early rain covereth it with blessing. Man, I thought about that. How fitting that is. You know, when we're going through that time, that valley of weeping, when we're going through that valley of struggle, that valley of grief, that valley of sorrow, that valley of heartache or whatever it is. You see, God can take that valley and He can turn it around for you and I. I had this little thing I'll never forget when the Lord first called me to preach. It was given to me by, by someone very dear to me. And it was a little, kind of a little Christian poem or insert, but it said, it's in the valleys where we grow. You see, we all can't always have the mountains to live on. You've got to be in the valley. 
And it's in the valley you learn to pray. It's in the valley where the struggle is real. It's in the valley where the old saying is where the rubber meets the road. Where reality's at. The reality is, is we live in a world that's evil. The reality is that we live in a world that's tough, it's rough, it's hard, it's not fair, it don't make sense. But we have a God tonight that we can look to. We have a God tonight that we can depend on. We have a God tonight that can help us as we go through that valley of the shadow of death. As David said, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Sure, and thou anointest my head with oil. Surely goodness and mercy, thou anointest my cup with oil. My cup overfloweth. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David understood what it meant to go through the valley. The sorrowful, weeping times. And it's in those times, God is our strength. God is our help. God is our refuge. God is the one that will lead us through the valley and help us and bring us through. He went on to say this there, and he said, verse 7, They go from strength to strength, from every one of them in Zion appeareth before God. Verse 8, O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Salah. Verse 9, Behold, O God, our shield, and look upon the face of thine anointed. For a day in thy courts is better than a thousand. David had a longing to be in the presence of God. For the day in thy courts is better than a thousand. He said, I'd rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Amen? David had a longing and a desire to be in the presence of God and to be in the house of God. In the place of God. Verse 11 says this. For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the man that trusteth in thee. Church, there's one thing we've got to remember tonight. Is we've got to trust in the Lord. We've got to trust that God's still on the throne. He's still in control. As things may seem dim and dark and difficult and hard to understand and comprehend, yet we've got to still believe and we've still got to trust that God is in control. And one of these days, God's going to take care of the evil. God's going to take care of all this one of these days. You see, we serve a just God. We serve a righteous God. And I'm so glad that we do. He's a good God tonight. He's the light of the world. He's our shield. He's our help. He's our strength. He's our glory. We just need to keep trusting in Him. Amen? I thank the Lord tonight for His presence. Being in the presence of God is where we gain strength. It encourages our faith. It encourages our walk. It encourages our relationship with the Lord each and every day. Amen? I'm thankful for that. Let's pray as they come get a song. Father, we thank you, Lord, for your word. God, we know that David understood what he wrote. God, it went much deeper than just the words that he pinned down. But Lord, knowing that, Father, what he wrote, it come from his heart. It come from experience. God, he had wisdom, he had knowledge, he had understanding of every word that he wrote down. I believe with all my heart, Lord, just as your word teaches us, that, Father, I believe David was divinely inspired by you as he began to write this. Father, David knew what it was like just to be able to dwell and to be in your presence. He had a longing for your presence. And he loved spending time and being with you, Lord. 
And I know that, Father, as a Christian, that, Lord, you give that longing and that desire to each and every one of us you've placed in our heart. Lord, let us take the time, and Lord, let us enjoy getting to spend time with you and be in your presence, Father. Lord, even though we go through a valley of weeping or sorrow, Lord, heartache, knowing that, Father, Lord, you are our strength, that you are our guide, that, Lord, you'll be with us and you'll bring us through the valley and you'll bring us on the mountain once again. Father, we pray tonight, Lord, for those that, Lord, may be here tonight, that, Father, Lord, even those that are watching, Lord, that those that may be watching tonight that's lost and doesn't know you as their Savior, I pray that, God, they could come to the saving knowledge and the understanding of you. Father, we pray for those, Lord, throughout this country that, Lord, doesn't know the joy or the peace or the comfort that it is, Father, in having you as their Savior. I pray that you would help us as your people, but Lord, to continue to share the goodness and tell the goodness and to spread the gospel of you, our Lord. We love you, we thank you, and all this we ask in your name. Amen. As we stand this evening, as they sing, Mind the Lord, the altar is open tonight. 448. to be a good prayer for us uh, just a closer walk with the Lord each and every day have you ever thought sometimes what it must have been like for Enoch uh, in the Bible it said that he walked with God and I thought about Adam and Eve and I know that they did with the Lord in the cool of the day before they sinned and transgressed uh, there in the garden but man just what it must have been like to be able just to walk and be in the presence of the Lord amen and uh, you know, each and every one of us tonight that have been saved by the grace of God, that's why Jesus came. He went to the cross of Calvary, and he died on the cross of Calvary, and rose a third and glorious day, ascended back to God the Father, sitting there tonight at the right hand, making intercession for you and I. And through the blood of Jesus, and accepting him as our Savior, we can have that walk with the Lord. Amen? We can have that, that closer walk with him each and every day. And uh, as David had wrote, and we read tonight, to be able just to dwell and to be in the presence of God, man, we can understand that. And we can do that. We can be in God's presence through the death on the cross and through the Son, Jesus. And I'm thankful for that tonight. 
Does anybody have a testimony or a word or anything that you feel led to say or do at all this evening before we dismiss? for her remember her and, you know Jill said something ain't, ain't that so good that when you can come in to God's house and it seems like more so on Wednesdays than it is on Sundays but when you can come into God's house midweek and uh, you know you just may not be feeling it or feeling good man when you can leave here and you can say it's been good to be in God's house and I feel a lot better leaving than I did coming in and uh, it's always wonderful, and I'm thankful for the Spirit of God, the presence of God. It's also wonderful to be able to come and have fellowship with brothers and sisters in Christ. And, and that's strength, and I'm thankful for that. Anybody else this evening, got a word or anything, testimony, feel free this evening before we dismiss. Ann and I were at the jail last night with the women. And so many of them said they were so glad that they were there because they felt like the Lord was getting their attention. But yet, so many of them, you know, said they were just filled with the Spirit just to have that few minutes of Bible time. And uh, it, it, was, it was truly a blessing for us. So... There was 14 women that uh, we witnessed to, so remember them. Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's remember these women. Remember those in our jail. Remember them. Wonderful ministry. Wonderful opportunity. So many people, you never know what they're going through. You never know what they're struggling with. You never know what they, what they face until they may just end up in a place like jail but you know I, I believe this God can help them he can restore them he can set them free and he can make a change and a difference in their life that's the kind of God we serve and I'm thankful for that anybody else tonight Lord I have a word of praise um, tell this little friend who been asking so many questions this past Sunday she asked Jesus in her heart Amen. So my heart's a little bit overfull, man. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. It's always wonderful to hear somebody being saved. Amen. Thank the Lord for that. Anybody else? Well, it's been good to be here tonight. I do appreciate everybody that's come to be with us. Appreciate those that have been watching online. And we want to encourage everybody to come back and be with us Sunday morning for Sunday school at 10 o'clock. Be with us there for Sunday school and worship service. Looking forward to a good service. We're going to have a, a little bit of Memorial Day. and We're going to have a, a good singing, good preaching, hopefully, good Lord willing. And uh, we're going to have uh, recognize our graduates and honor them as well. So we're going to have just a little bit of everything Sunday. So come be with us. Looking forward to what God has in store. And uh, looking forward just to having that opportunity to worship Him and praise Him. And uh, it'd be a wonderful day, wouldn't it, for somebody lost to come to know Jesus as their Savior. So be praying for God's Holy Spirit, His drawing power, the opportunity for a lost person to be saved. Be praying for that this week, that, that God would, would give that opportunity for that lost person. Please, if you would, take some of these with you, pass those out, get the word out, invite, 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 and encourage people to come be with us in Vacation Bible School. We'll have an adult class as well as we do every year, so remember that. So keep that in mind. You can pass the word along there. Uh, but uh, we're just going to have an opportunity, take as much of the opportunity that God has given us in that week, in those few days, to share the gospel and to tell these children about Jesus and hope that they have an opportunity to be saved. So be praying for that. Remember that. Remember all and everyone that is a part and involved. Keep them in prayer. All righty. 
no one else has anything be back Sunday morning Lord willing at 10 o'clock for Sunday school 11 o'clock worship all righty I'm going to ask Brother Billy if he would dismiss us tonight in prayer our Father tonight you're so good to us and so merciful toward us we thank you for your mercy and your goodness thank you for salvation and the sweet Holy Spirit as he abides with us daily we just thank you Lord for going to the cross dying for our sins we so undeserving. And Lord, just as we sung tonight, just a closer walk with Thee. Dear Lord, let that be our plea tonight. Because Lord, we will, You will move just as close to us as we will allow You to, Lord. I thank You for each one that's here, for everyone's prayer request tonight that's been offered up to You. I would ask You, Father, to answer those requests in Your own, in Your way, and we know that You will, Lord. That so much to pray about, pray for so many with those that are sick that we know about, Lord, the lost people. We pray for them. And we ask you to forgive us for we fail and come short. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.